let me tell our listeners this. Between 1972 and 1980, there were three schools that dominated the state of Ohio in high school football, AAA and AA. Muller, Jerry Faust, six state championships. Pat Mancuso, Princeton, three state championships. And in AA football, the Wyoming Cowboys, runners up in 75, state champions in 1977. So, folks, before USA Today and their mythical national championship, the Cowboys, the Princetons, and the Mullers well, I'll dominated. You, I'll tell you, too, the, the thing that I got mad about, you know, we were defending state champions in 78. We go 10 0 and didn't even get back in the tournament. Due to the Harbin ratings. Due to the Harbin ratings. I was here for part of it for 25 years, and uh, it was a good, great experience. It's pretty amazing, um, and and the the type of success that Wyoming's had has has been pretty amazing, and and a small community, a small public school, being able to uh, get the athletes year after year after year, and um, you know it's it, it's just um, a remarkable community. Um, and a remarkable football program. It's great. I mean, it's a long tradition. Our kids, uh, a kid, our kids accept the high expectations uh, that the community has. Uh, they accept that high expectations. They take it very serious. And I think that goes a long way when you ask kids to dedicate their summer to the weight room, dedicate their, their off season to getting better as a football player. It, the kids accept responsibility because of the tradition. They don't want to let that tradition down. And I think that goes a long way. It's almost like tradition is a 12th man. I think even now with Aaron Hancock's teams, uh, current teams, they expect to win. So that's important. It's a winning tradition. Uh, losing can be uh, like a cancer, and, and winning, winning can be too. And so Wyoming winning is uh, everything here. Oh, it's awesome. Growing up in Wyoming all my life, um, my whole family's from Wyoming. Seeing the, um, the 64 team that went unscored upon, to see these guys when I was in the fifth and sixth grade and to see them now and to understand the accomplishment that they had being unscored upon, uh, it's just awesome. And, and they just paved the way for all of us um, who came behind them. It's crazy when you really think about it. Um, 100 years of football and what's even crazier is um, the success, the 100 years of success of Wyoming football went. Uh, Jim, uh, when he was contacting me when this, when he was planning all this and he let me see some numbers, it was kind of unbelievable uh, for me to look at. And I was watching the news this morning and they're saying the second winning uh, program. Win percentage. Win percentage program. So just to think about that and really put it in perspective. When you're in it, you don't really think about it. But now as I'm older and I sit back and really think about what Wyoming football has done, it's, it's amazing to really think about. Looking at everyone all together, it kind of hits you. You're like, wow, you know, 100 years of, you know, football and great tradition and winning. And you start to think on what it took to establish those wins and to shake hands with the people whose shoulders we now stand on is pretty amazing. Mr. Bradbury was the principal and at the uh, pep rally, before the first game that year, he took the microphone and went to the middle of the floor, got the kids quiet, and said, I'm going to make a prediction this year. This team is not going to lose a game, and furthermore, they're not going to be scored on. And heaven forbid, they did not lose a game. They did not give up a point. You know, looking at that team um, now, oh, it is. It's unbelievable. But, you know, they were big, but they were talented. They were quick, fast, and smart. Coach Lewis told me later, he said, it, that was one of the worst years and hardest years of coaching that I ever had because when the score would be out of sight and he should be getting uh, some reserves in there and getting game experience, he said, the team didn't want to give up a point. The, the fans in the stands were screaming, don't give up any points and all like that. And he said, the next year was a, a, a hard year. 
because a lot of kids didn't get experience that should have gotten it. The uh, school administration is very, very supportive. The community, is, uh, the football is important in, in Wyoming. And uh, the fact that uh, we've only had four coaches is, is a pretty remarkable. Um, I was very fortunate because I got to play for Bob Lewis. And Bob Lewis was a, just a, a, I mean, he's a legend. Um, just uh, an unbelievable football coach. And uh, Gary Jump was an assistant for Bob when I played. So, you know, I obviously played under Gary too. And, and then Gary took over and then I was just, unbelievably fortunate to take over for Gary and uh, and I had 21 great years at Wyoming and Aaron Hancock who was my defensive coordinator took over for me and winning helps winning helps so when you have when you have a tradition of winning um, you know you want to stay at a place where you can win and uh, and this you can win here and and you have a lot of good athletes walking throughout the school and you have a lot of support system you have everything you need to be successful um, you just need to get the job done. It's just been a, a, a lot of continuity, and I think that's helped the program too. I really feel like this is a place where we can continue to increase uh, our level of competition and continue to get better and better every single season. And uh, our motto is, is do things better than they've ever been done before. And that goes no different uh, because we've had two back-to-back 12-1 -back seasons. And, we want to improve upon that. We want to improve upon everything that we do. And um, so that's our focus every single day. That's incredible. Um, of course, I'm, I'm biased towards Coach Barry because that's who I played for. Um, that's who I know uh, the most. But um, when I got my Hall of Fame um, speech last, last fall, I looked up some numbers on him. And it was really amazing to look at the numbers that he has and success and winning percentage that he has as a head coach in Ohio and Kentucky. assistant to coach Bob Lewis who came here in 1956 and uh, he was a walking encyclopedia he he knew it all had seen it all and uh, was easy to work for but uh, he had the last call and the kids knew who was who was the man my football coach was Bob Lewis he was also my social studies teacher and my athletic director I worked in the public school system for 35 years as a social studies teacher, a football coach, and an athletic director. So he had a, quite an impact on my life. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, Bernie played for Coach Lewis, and Bernie was a very important impact, had a very important impact on my, my life and my coaching career. And uh, so I, I definitely feel like, you know, Bob Lewis is, is part of this program today. I've been knowing Coach Lewis all my life. Uh, funny story, I was a freshman, ninth grade, and all my life I was um, from Pee Wee all the way to the ninth grade, I was a running back. And so Coach Lewis put me at a tight end. I didn't know what a tight end was, and I, I remember to this day I went to Coach, he said, Coach, I was born to run the ball, I want to be a running back. And he said, Bell, you can be a third string running back or a first string tight end. And I said, man, so okay, Coach. <laughs> And um, if I remember back some of the things that he said, um, I think one of the things that sticks out is that he always used to say, you don't win football games, you lose them. And you lose them by making mistakes, more mistakes than the other team. And, and um, that's true in life. You know, you're, you're, you're successful if you, if you do the right thing. If you do the wrong thing, you're not gonna be successful. And, and uh, so, you know, that's just a, a value that I learned from him and have used that in my life and my coaching career. And, um, it's been a, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I had the opportunity to only meet Bob Lewis uh, twice. I met Bob Lewis twice before he passed away. And a tremendous impact. You can tell the tremendous impact that he had on this community and, uh, and his former players, Coach Barry. And Bar Coach Barry has passed that along to me. And uh, it's been a, a, an honor. It's an honor to be a head football coach here at Wyoming. And from that point on, I tried my best to score as many touchdowns as a tight end. Back there, Bob didn't run that much. We didn't have a West Coast offense. And when he threw it, I caught it. And I tried to score every time I got the ball. That's beautiful. <laughs> oh, well, I was looking at Bob Lewis' record, and I was just, you know, because when you see the field and it's the name Bob Lewis, 
stadium and everything. And I was like, well, who is this fan, Bob Lewis, and what did he do? And uh, just to, I understand what how hard it is to get one win. And when you have 198, you know, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty impressive. And uh, you understand, like, the dedication and the hard work and the time he probably spent away from his family to give to Wyoming and to build what we have today. I told his grandson, Kyle, played quarterback for me. And I told Kyle last night that uh, your grandfather would have absolutely loved to have been here tonight. <laughs> they would have given him the microphone, and I don't think we'd ever gotten it back. Uh, he, he would have talked forever. He would love it. He would love it. I had an opportunity when I came back here as the athletic director. We had one of these get-togethers, and he was in the crowd, and I had an opportunity to thank him for everything he did for me. And, and uh, you don't often get to do that with your mentors. And, uh, but he would, he would just absolutely love seeing all these people from all the teams that he coached. And oh, he would love it. And one thing about Coach Lewis, his memory was unbelievable. Every, every generation and every kid that came back, he had a story for every kid. He had a story for every kid. I mean, it was unbelievable, uh, the mind he had. It just, I'd just be glad to say, well, coaches, damn good to see you. Glad to, <laughs> glad to see you. I mean, I don't know that you'll find a more supportive community, um, certainly for athletics, but also for arts, for academics, really any initiative that the school has. Um, it seems the whole community really gets behind that and becomes a driving factor in it. It's a family. It's a community. I mean, there's so many second and third generation families that have played here. Uh, the Marty family is one in particular. They have a son that's a quarterback at Butler University. Another is cousins of quarterback at Northwestern University, and uh, their b fathers both played here, and their uh, uncles and grandfathers played here. So um, they, uh, it's uh, it's just a community where people stick around because of the schools and a great academic uh, excellence, and and they they continue to play football and win. On Friday nights to go out into the um, to the track, I usually get down there right as the game's starting to watch kids from you know three in their Wyoming football jersey to 93 um, celebrating the team and the camaraderie is really awesome. I don't remember there being a problem when a levy would come up to be voted on and uh, they're just a good uh, the community is just a strong community dedicated to good ed education for the kids and uh, they they expect they expect a lot of them in the when they're in the classroom and they expect the teachers that are there to be on the ball too i would say it's an incredible support system that we have here and and just the amount of support that the community shows helps us be successful continue to do that continue to support the community for uh, for especially our sports um, activities and facilities that we're trying to do uh, we like people who went to Wyoming alumni to come back support us and continue this rich tradition of not only athletics but a knit close um, family community and that's what we are that's what we are no matter where we are you know we have that strong bond I love it here I mean I love this community uh, the community is great uh, just keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, whatever, whatever this, uh, whatever the model is, just keep it up because it's been successful for 100 years. Football has changed my life, and and it's 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 great that I can still be a part of of, of this great sport and be in a place where you know kids are having a lot of success and wanting to come out and having fun and uh, and and taking those sacrifices and being held accountable. All those things that football can provide, and that's what. Wyoming football has done for a lot of kids, so it's an incredible support system. Can't say enough about the community support. It's nourishment. You know, this community is very nourishing, uh, very welcoming, very a humble community who opens everyone with uh, welcoming arms. And just growing up in this environment, I wouldn't have it any other way. be around for all of the next hundred years to be very clear um, maybe the next 10 to 15 maybe uh, God willing 
but we are. We're planning, um, you know, so much of the landscape of high school athletics has changed over the last 15 years, including the number of kids that participate, including the number of teams there are. And really, it's time for us to catch up a little bit to provide that space and that off-season training and just the things that are really keep us competing the way that we choose to compete, which is at a high level.